Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. McDonough with our morning announcements here for Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Uh, fully into April. Hopefully uh, not too many April Fool's pranks were played on you, or hopefully you didn't get away with too many of them either. Always uh, kind of an interesting day. Um, today is Thursday, and our third day online, Bel Air, um, HISD at home at Bel Air. It's kind of this uh, model that we're following right now. And if uh, you're still not sure, this will be your an A day, of course. And so going to classes 1, 2, 3, and 4. And those start at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. If your teacher is doing direct instruction, then you can check in on that. Um, if you haven't already found out, whether you're in the Google Classroom or in the Hub, um, and you're just not sure, maybe it's your first day back uh, to class, um, you can always check at the Hub landing page and your teacher will be able to tell you where to go from there, whether it's a staying in the hub or going to a Google Classroom. And certainly if they're part of a Remind text group, you can get the code to join there as well. Let's get to some of our announcements. We're still building exactly what those announcements look like um, each day as uh, things getting rescheduled and figuring out how we're gonna do some different things. I talked about uh, Bird Keeper, Booster Club, Cheerleader, Cardinal Crew Leader, all of these different pieces. Um, the, that information we're still getting to you, so I promise as soon as that's hot off the press, we'll get that to you and uh, make sure that you're uh, aware. Um, speaking of the press, if you check out the TPP online at Bel Air TPP, um, you can see their online issue. They've got a really slick product uh, this year. They've done incredible work with Ms. Harris as the sponsor and then our editors and the full staff. And so if you haven't checked that out yet, um, it is available online. And because they weren't able to get it out right before we took our extended um, break from campus, 5100 Maple. A couple other things though, I do want to let our seniors know that right now, go ahead and put on your schedule, we're planning to have a senior meeting uh, for the class of 2020 next Thursday, so that's a week from today, at 2.30 p.m. and we'll send you the information of how you'll uh, log in. It'll be through the Microsoft Teams app um, and we'll send you that information uh, next week and we'll get that out to you so that you can uh, uh, come and join and hear a little bit of what I'm able to give you updates on. I hope to be able to give you more updates next week and uh, get some of your questions because um, we've got some planning to do to try to figure out how to celebrate and memorialize and really uh, bring a lot of energy to uh, what are going to be your final couple months as a Bel Air Cardinal and I need your help doing that. And I know you're going to help me. You guys are very participatory and uh, very enthusiastic about the class of 2020. I know you have high expectations, and we want to help you meet those no matter what our circumstances look like. Um, we do have a couple of questions, as you remember, um, and I think the link works now. So if you look right down here, there is a link to ask me questions. And they're coming in in a couple different ways. Uh, two of them, apparently, in addition to my boy Ralphie right here behind me, um, I had another guest star who popped into uh, yesterday's announcements, and that was uh, one of my two cats. Uh, my family, we do have two cats. I think Finn, who is black and white, uh, popped in yesterday, and uh, he's been with us now, oh, probably seven or eight years, and uh, has been um, just a part of the family. And then we also have a new cat. Um, he's an orange cat. Um, and his name is Henry, and Henry's been with us since November, so I guess that's coming on uh, about four months with us, but probably about six months old at this time. Um, but they're great. Um, I actually never grew up with cats, and I've enjoyed having these two cats, although they're rascals for sure, um, and they eat a lot. Um, another question that came in was, who's my favorite math teacher? And I actually have a funny story to talk about the math teachers that I had. Um, in eighth grade, I took algebra, as many of you did, and um, I had Miss Blumenthal. And Miss Blumenthal was pretty tough. It was a tough middle school teacher, and I remember her uh, because I wasn't a great math student. I was good enough to be in algebra in eighth grade, but that was about it. And I think you had to have like a 90 or something like that to be able to move on to geometry in high school. Otherwise, it made you retake algebra after the whole year. Even if you had passed it, you had to like have an A. Well, actually, a 90 when I was in middle school and in high school was a B. Um, so if you can believe that. Um, but if you didn't get like this 90, then you had to retake the entire class. It was crazy. 
Um, in any case, um, I was like in the mid to low 80s, and um, so I was going to need teacher recommendation. And Ms. Blumenthal did recommend me. And uh, so I was able to go on to geometry, and I remember that, that even though I wasn't the best student, she still thought I was going to do all right. Um, now, I say that because um, she wasn't necessarily correct because I bombed geometry and kind of felt like I was catching up through math the rest of high school. The other thing that's kind of funny is that in high school, I went to Dulles High School, which is out in Fort Bend, uh, go Vikings, and um, I had the same math teacher for four years. If you can believe that, Miss Barbara James was my math teacher in ninth grade for geometry, tenth grade for algebra two, and then through pre-cal that I kind of did over a couple of years. Um, uh, just to kind of let you know about that. But uh, she seemed to just climb in the subjects as I climbed through the years. And so I actually had the same math teacher for four years, um, which was an interesting experience. But those are kind of my um, memories of my math teachers. Um, another question was, I know that Bel Air used to be far less diverse than it is now. Uh, when did the major demographic changes come to Bel Air? And I would say this began in the late 90s um, is when it really started to kind of become a lot more diverse than it was before. Um, and then really through the 2000s as the city of Houston expanded um, and became even more diverse, so did Bel Air High School. We really consider ourselves to be kind of a microcosm of the city. And our student body, uh, I think, reflects a lot of what the population is in the city. Uh, just for those who don't know, we're about 43% Hispanic, 22% uh, Anglo. I think we're 19% uh, African-American and then I think 14% Asian. And so very diverse, the most diverse high school in all of HISD. And I think the second most diverse high school in all of Texas. So another thing to be proud of, but it really started to come probably in the mid nineties and then really accelerated uh, from about 2003 through now. So uh, just as the city has as well. Another one is what's my favorite Bel Air memory? And as you get older, your memory doesn't go back quite as far. So I really have to kind of limit it to this year. Um, and I've got three that jump out really fast. One is, is not, uh, it's a very, a very recent memory. And that is the playoff run that our boys basketball team went on. And if you went to any of these games, you just saw an incredible group. Um, our boys program was picked to finish third in district. And they ended up among the final eight teams in the entire state of Texas. Uh, in the 6A division, which is the highest, most competitive level. Um, but they won games in the last second, won games in the last shot, um, beat teams that they had other people thought they had no business even being on the court with. Um, because they did it together, they were a great team. Uh, there was not just one star that they leaned on. The whole team played well, and so that was a lot of fun. The other one would be, from a sports angle, is um, a couple years ago when we won our first playoff game since I think 1973 or something like that in football. Uh, we went out to Cinco Ranch and came from behind on their field and beat them 35 to 31. And um, it had been more than 40 years since we'd had a playoff victory in football. And so that was a, a great, great memory and just the joy and the excitement and uh, uh, a lot of alumni reaching out, just really proud of that. And then the last would be, I think from our theater, department. Um, they did their musical, well it's actually theater, choir, orchestra, and dance. Um, they did the musical uh, You're in Town this year and there's a song called Run River Run and oh, Run Freedom Run, Run Freedom Run and um, it's a great number. It's just high energy, great choreography, great dancing. Um, so that's a great memory as well. So good things there. Um, and then with that another part that was asked was uh, hey you should have a quote for the day and so I'm going to share um, today's quote and it is from Bernice Johnson Reagan, not Reagan, but Reagan. And it says that life's challenges are not supposed to paralyze you. They're supposed to help you discover who you are. And I think that we're all facing a lot of challenges right now. And I hope that you're starting to figure out a little bit about who you are a little bit more um, as you're figuring out how your day looks and, and how it's going to go and what you're going to use your time for and how you're going to care for the others in your family and in your community and how you're going to stay connected because that's really important. And part of my reason for doing these announcements is so that I can stay connected to you. Um, as I've, you heard me say before, I miss you guys. Um, I'm used to seeing you all around during the day, um, whether in the morning when I open the doors at 7.15 or at uh, dismissal, cardinal hour, wherever it is, I'm used to seeing you guys and your energy is what I miss. And so this helps me stay a little more connected and I'll push you and challenge you to figure out tomorrow how you're going to stay connected. Well, today, as well as tomorrow, how you're going to stay connected with those in your family and uh, your friends 
and your teachers because that's going to be really important as we continue uh, through this challenge. So those are our morning announcements. Thank you and enjoy the day.